All right, guys, it is Monday the 5th, and we're back in school, finishing up quarter four. I just posted the link to this calendar, and if you check it out, it's got all the days, all the e-learning. We have eight weeks left, and most of them are either five days or four plus in e-learning. And then the last one is just four plus this final teacher day. I think that's just for grades and stuff haven't even heard about it yet. So in this class, we are reading a story, Shadow Over Innsmouth, and I've posted two videos where I go over chapter one and I go over chapter two. Each one of those has a little assignment, but nothing huge. And today, we're going to set that aside, do a separate assignment, although of course it's related. And then next class, we're going to get back to the story. It has five chapters. So if we go three on Wednesday, four on Friday. We'll finish it next week and then do a little quiz. And then I have a couple other stories that is um, sort of candidates. Um, I might ask you guys to help me decide. But I have a couple other stories that we might do um, as well for the quarter. So for example, one I'm thinking about, and I've mentioned this before, is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, an older story, but very classic and very uh, relevant to today. A lot of stories are inspired by that, even if they don't know it, um, or even if the audience doesn't know it. For example, in our comic book unit, we talked about how The Incredible Hulk is inspired by Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Stan Lee said that in the video, and anything where it's about a scientist who transforms based on something he made and becomes a monster and maybe at first he likes it and then he realizes the problem and then it's too late etc etc that is inspired by this by the way sci-fi is pretty new if we talk about fantasy romance whatever we can go back thousands of years but sci-fi as a genre is only like you know under 200 years old dr jekyll and mr hyde is one of the examples of something you could say was an early sci-fi story. Usually people say uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley is the first or one of the first. And so in that sort of 1800s um, area, then you get into the Jules Verne and the H.G. Wells and all the stuff we know. But what we've looked at in this class is stuff a little bit later, a couple decades later, um, the 1920s, the 1930s, and we're getting into the stuff that was in the early comic books and the stuff that was in the early uh, magazines that were called stuff like Weird Tales and Tales from Beyond and things like that, where you had sci-fi, you had fantasy, but another part of it that I haven't really brought up but is a huge um, element is horror. So we're going to talk today, we're going to talk about uh, horror stories. If this was a uh, fall semester, maybe we do a little October theme. But today we're just going to keep it to a single day thing. And what I'm really going to mention and what our questions are going to be about is whenever you have a horror story, it's uh, more than any other genre, probably. It's going to have morality. It's going to have uh, good and bad, and it's going to have, like, punishments for the characters who do something bad, okay? For example, if you've ever watched The Twilight Zone, you'll have, you know, maybe a, a character who's selfish, and then he gets a punishment that is based on that selfish uh, desire. Or maybe you have a character who's greedy, and they get what they want, but it turns out to be a bad thing. Obviously, the be careful what you wish for stories are classic whenever somebody meets a genie or uh, whatever kind of creature. Uh, in the 90s, there was a series called Wishmaster that was pretty, uh, pretty bad, but it had a uh, great common example of all those things. Somebody wanted to be beautiful, and then it caused them to... Uh, you know, decay in some appropriate way. So if you remember in a sci-fi 
uh, or in our comic book documentary, they talked about EC Comics. EC Comics, um, I don't remember what that stands for, but it's something really boring. It's like entertaining comics or something. But they had series that were standalone stories. It wasn't like Superman where you follow him forever. It was this week it's one thing, next week it's another thing. And they were all these horror tales of morality where um, somebody would get uh, punished for their greed. So I don't know why this came to my mind, but uh, did you guys ever watch the Leprechaun movies? Like, uh, I think started in the 90s starring Warwick Davis, the leprechaun. People would always go after him to try to get the gold. And, of course, they would get punished. There's one where somebody wished for gold and the leprechaun, like, you know, did his little magic, whatever. And then the guy's belly started growing. And it turns out that, the you know, the pot of gold was in this guy's chest. And it was like, well, you got your wish. But he ended up dying because he had this, uh, you know, exploding thing in his rib cage. That's... A classic thing in horror and if you take it a couple decades later to the um, you know past the EC comics and past the Twilight Zone and you go into like the 80s with slasher movies there was always that morality element of kids would go out in the woods and do drugs and have sex and then they would get killed by Jason or they would get killed by uh, Michael Myers or something like that. And then the one who survived, usually in those movies, the one who survived was the one who did, you know, the one who didn't smoke weed or didn't have sex or, you know, whatever the specific thing in that movie was. The one who actually did the babysitting instead of uh, letting the kids run around or something like that. And even though it's extremely simple and that wasn't what they cared about, the people who made those movies were not like, moral people who wanted you to be good it just came in anyway because that's part of the genre so my question for you today is can you think of an example of that a horror story and this could be a movie a book a tv show usually tv shows are the best at this kind of thing recently it's been black mirror but over the decades, we've had Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, Tales from the Crypt, which I believe Tales from the Crypt is based on an EC comic or another brand of comics from back in the day. And they would all say, okay, this person uh, sort of has a, a character flaw, and here's how they're going to get, uh, you know, get into trouble for it. So that's my question. Do you, can you think of a horror story? where that happened, and what was the moral, what was the lesson, and how did the story uh, teach that lesson. And then, can you think of one that doesn't have that, that just completely uh, gets around that, and maybe the bad person gets away with their crime, or maybe you can't even tell what's supposed to be good or bad. And that's what we're going to start talking about next class when we get back to reading this story, The Shadow Over Innsmouth by H.P. Lovecraft. We're going to get into that and start talking about how, well, that seems a little bit different because it's not clear who's good and who's bad. and um, Is the narrator doing something wrong by going to this town? And maybe he's being punished for his curiosity. Or is he doing the right thing and trying to solve a mystery? Or are the people in the town good or bad? Is it their fault that they're monstrous? Well, you know, it's a little less clear. And you don't have a very obvious uh, line of saying, well, these people are good and these people are bad. And that's why this happens. So... Um, I'll end the video now before it gets too long, but the question is, one, can you think of a horror story that has this classic moral of a person getting punished for their uh, greed or lust or vanity or something like that? And then 
maybe an opposite character who gets rewarded for not having those things. And then number two, can you think of a horror story, which could involve sci-fi or fantasy or any any version of horror. You know, it could be a, a slasher like Jason, or it could be a space tale of time travel or something like that, or it could be, you know, summoning a, a genie through a portal. Uh, can you think of one where that doesn't, and maybe the bad people get away with it, or you can't tell who's bad, or everyone's bad, or it's just so weird that it's hard to describe in those terms. And that's it. A pretty light, uh, quick assignment for today, and then we're going to get back to reading the story. Make sure you take the today to catch up. If you haven't read the first two chapters, you can watch my videos, and we'll do chapter three next time. Thanks.